Let's head to Australia now for a remarkable story. A trainee pilot in Australia thought his instructor was messing with him when he collapsed during their maiden lesson, forcing the novice flyer to land the Cessna 152 solo. Max Sylvester called air traffic control for help after his Kiwi-born instructor lost consciousness during their flight over Jandicott Airport in Western Australia. Now, his wife and three children were watching on as he came into to land, along with the flight school owner, Chuck McElwee. Well, there's an old adage, uh, any time you walk away, uh, make a landing uh, and you can walk away from it, it's a, that's a good landing. If you can use the plane again, it's a fabulous landing. And he made a fabulous landing. Utterly amazing. Take us through it. So he's, he's up in the plane. How far through the lesson were they? Uh, they were uh, coming back from uh, the lesson, and we have entry points into the airport, and he had uh, just passed the entry point, and then his instructor passed out. And he thought he, the instructor was just messing with him, but he soon realized that that was not the case. And uh, so uh, he proceeded to the airport and told people what to do. I mean, if you've heard the live ATC, he, that's, he starts saying he's got an emergency. And uh, anyway, the tower comes to the party and they do, do their tower thing and they get extra calm and they get all the distractions out of the area. And your, your job right now is just keep focusing on that aircraft um, as best you can. Um, secondary to that is just to keep his head upright and his body upright in the seat. Um, but we're going to uh, get you on the ground very soon and get uh, both of you guys uh, on the ground safely. And I sent an instructor up to back up the tower if they had any other questions. And anyway, it just all worked together. Well, that's the understatement of the century, Chuck. <laughs> hey, we need more feel-good stories like this. Well, so in the control room, you say that, you know, the air traffic controller went all calm. I mean, that person was as cool as a cucumber. So what were they doing? Visualising the inside of the plane? How do you give someone instructions who's never landed a plane before? Well, uh, you know, this uh, Jandicott out here, the airport we're at, is like the busiest one, has been the busiest airport in the Southern Hemisphere. This is a major training base, and these guys are used to these kind of events. Okay, and uh, I mean, they don't have people landing, but they're used to student pilots. So they know that when things start turning bad, they have to... Somebody has to remain calm, and they did. They did. They did really well. And what about Max, the trainee pilot? What about him? How was he doing through all of this? He was a bit excited at the, in the beginning, but he, he settled right down, and, and, you know, I guess it was like having a, a voice on the radio. It was like having somebody sitting next to you. And all the time he was remaining calm because he knew that uh, the guy that was with him uh, needed to get on the ground too. How long did it take to get him on the ground from the point where he um, contacts the tower and says, well, we've got a problem here? Probably about 45 minutes, a little more than that. The biggest concern I had was it was starting to get dark. And uh, we really wanted him, the sunset was coming on, but we really wanted him down. But they got him down uh, just in, not just in time, but they got him down in the daylight and everything happened the way it was supposed to. The emergency services came out and took care of him. So his wife was there, right, watching this? Oh, uh, yeah. Yes, and she was a, a rock. She so had three sm very small children to take care of, and but she wasn't frantic or anything. So you were standing with her during this this landing, were you, Chuck? For some of it, but I had other people that helped her out with their children. And, uh, and so, uh, you know, I had lots of people around that hang around my airport, you know, hang around my flying school. So everybody turned to and helped out and did, did what they could. OK, Chuck, so talk me through this. The last, well, few seconds, you're watching the Cessna come into the airport, right? Mm -hmm. He's mm -hmm. making the approach. What's mm -hmm. going through your head? Are you breathing at this point? I would be holding my breath. What were you all doing? Well, it's no use in me holding my breath. I'm not the guy in trouble. Uh, you know, I, um, you just have to put your faith in people that they've got it together and 
all the people that work together, you know, I'm not worried about it at all. I, I'm a, I'm an optimist, and uh, and and my optimism paid off this time. So seriously, Chuck, you didn't even break a sweat as he was coming into land. Well, what, nothing was going to happen to me. <laughs> of course, I've been in, I've been around flying for over fifty years, so. You know, I've seen one or two bad things in my time, but this this wasn't the worst, and it could have been bad, but it didn't. It turned out just right this time. So, does Max have some real potential as a pilot then? Oh, he does. All I have to do is, you know, he bypassed quite a few lessons. We got to go back and teach him that stuff because he's going to need it to get his license. So, when he came off the plane, what was he like? Mm. Uh, well, he, they they just pulled the plane off into the taxiway, and they taught, brought him in here. But when he got into the building, I told him to go kiss his wife, say he's okay, and then come back and, and do the paperwork. And then, uh, you know, he was just hyperactive he's hot on an adrenaline high, which is what you would expect from somebody from this situation. But he, he handled it well, and uh, the only thing I told him I didn't want him to do was drive his car home. So uh, Why is that, his Chuck? wife came and got him. Well, it's just like any other thing. If you're on an adrenaline high and as you come down, you can crash. Uh, by, and I don't mean crash like that, but you just collapse. So that's really what I was worried about. And I told her not to let him drive a car until he was, he was calm and she could see it in him. And so- that's what happened. You don't think he was put off coming back for another lesson? No. Nah. I reckon he'll be here within the next few days. You think so? Yes, I do. Hey. hey it's going to be hard to keep him out of the air now. The, we gave him a first solo certificate after this. Straight afterwards, you just gave him the certificate? Well, we had to. He, went, he was by himself for the most part. Well, it seems like an A1 landing. What was the top piece of advice do you think this guy, um, Max, was given? The, the the most important thing. Just take your time. We'll get you down. Do what we tell you, and we'll get you down. So did you did you have a bit of a well, not a practice run with him in that forty five minutes? But was he talked through doing a few things and and had a go at doing a few things before he came around for the landing? Well, they uh, they brought him around for five or six close to the ground approaches just flying down the runway so he could get used to what he was going to see. Uh, And uh, really being close to the ground just before you land kind of can put some people off when they first start. But they they had him practice enough that he was comfortable when it did happen. Incredible. Now tell us about the instructor. How's he doing? Well, he's he's all right, but we haven't been given any... uh, medical prognosis yet but all i know is they're still doing all the the various uh diagnoses that they have to do he's still in the hospital but he's a kiwi he's 38 years old he did a career change from it to aviation and he just started with us about a month ago i hope this kiwi boy is okay and that is the flight school owner chuck McElwee.